I'm sorry, guys, but this is the end. You no longer get to go to movie theaters because they're done. Wait, what? I don't... What kind of dramatic? <laughs> no. So th there's there's recent news that says 2024 global box office forecast up slightly, still below last year. So uh -oh. no, you <laughs> are going to be able to go to movie theaters. The general idea is, is this possibly the beginning of the end of movie theaters? Meaning they're still existing. They're still making a lot of money, but we're noticing the numbers just keep going down year over yeah. year. Are we basically at the precipice of the beginning of the end? I mean, it's kind of interesting you say that because I literally just got a text from MJ saying, I'm in the theater. I'm the only one here. <laughs> Dang. What was she watching? I'm not sure, actually. But if we take a look at what this article has to say numbers-wise... Who are those bagels? Those are... <laughs> I think they are, yeah. Dang. Goer Street is projecting theatrical revenues this year will hit $32.3 billion, up from the $31.5 billion they originally forecasted. This is still below the $33.9 billion earned worldwide last year and $10 billion below the box office peak of $42.3 billion hit pre-pandemic. Which is surprising, though, because, like, you know... We had a couple heavy hitters when it came to theater watches this year. I mean, there was, I feel like this year or last year, last year, we had a lot of people going out to Oppenheimer and then a surprising favorite that came out of nowhere, Barbie. And we also had Super Mario Bros, but that's not we enough did. because numbers are still down. So last year, the world brought in essentially 33.9 billion last year. And that's yeah. still not as high as before. So I think a big part of that is just there's not as many heavy hitters. Everyone goes mm -hmm. to the theaters to watch those specific ones. But past that, we're not showing up, right? I mean, I'd, I'd also like to remind you that compared to, say, a year like 2017, uh, I'm just going to list off some movies. A Transformers movie. They had Baby Driver. They had Ghost in the Shell. They had Blade okay. Runner. They had Jumanji. They had Beauty and the Beast. They had Lego Batman, Baywatch, Kong, Skull Island, John Wick 2, The Last Jedi, Star Wars, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales, Kingsmen, uh, Power Rangers, Alien Covenant, right? The Dark Tower. I'm not saying that these movies, War for the Planet of the Apes, uh, Hitman's okay. Bodyguard, yeah. Logan, uh, Fast Logan and Furious, King. Life. I'm not saying any of these movies were great. Mm-hmm. But a lot, there were a lot of them, and people went and saw them. Yeah, I do think, especially like Dead Man Tell No Tales, even mm -hmm. though nobody's talking about it after it was released, because it was a, it was kind of like, you watch it one time, that's it. Everybody wanted to watch it because it was Pirates of the Caribbean. I feel like yeah. that itself is nostalgic. You know, everybody goes to watch Fast and Furious because it's Fast and Furious. That may be true, but that was like the last line of people going to see things because of true. see things. Uh, maybe not the exact last line, but it was the start. It seemed like there were a lot of movies that came out and a lot of people were going to see them. I don't think we can blame COVID entirely for for the, the declining in the, in the movie theaters. Yeah, people stopped going during covid but that's over i think what we're really looking at is there's not an abundance of movies that people want to see right and and i think it was probably during covid a large amount of people got wise all right let's just say this there was a series of events that took place over the you know two years that covid was plaguing america mm -hmm. and the world but and it was everyone found out disney sucks <laughs> mm -hmm. Marvel fell apart, Star Wars fell apart, Warner Brothers had a few non very heavy hits, Netflix had a handful of not very heavy hits, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And also, Rings of Power came out in conjunction with a very good House of the Dragon season, so we could see what's good and bad, you know, and literally yeah. compare them in real time. There was a lot of that going on in the streaming world outside of theater walls. And mm -hmm. so, no, we're not showing up to watch Wish or, you know, the next Pixar movie because well, I think not interested. I think, too, uh, what's happening with a lot of these movies is that they're coming out, they're getting 
bad reviews from critics or viewers, and then people are not going to watch them because right now there's just too many that are bad and nobody wants to risk it. You used to be able to go to a movie and you were kind of, it was a risk. Now with the, uh, I guess it's sort of like the social media boom, it's really in full swing right now. Nobody's going to see if the movie is good. They're waiting to see what others say and then they're like, I'm not gonna waste my time or money. There's also the element of not just a lack of storytelling or interesting storytelling. Politics has been in Hollywood for a while, mm -hmm. but I feel like just like when you're in a stick shift and you shift gears mm -hmm. and you really feel it because you're mm -hmm. really taking off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Summer of Love, 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Hollywood shift the woke ideology into a new gear in that summer they shifted that into, into a new gear and then and it downshifted entertainment all of the messaging in mm. movies and shows yeah. went to it's just skyrocketed like that it was, was a like, pretty big uptick um you know you saw netflix they they couldn't create a movie or a show without including a gay character it was right? a meme yeah it was a meme for a they, minute they couldn't but but then 2020 happened the summer of 2020 and now there's not a piece of media that exists not just on netflix but anywhere mm -hmm. that does not have a gay character people right now are watching trailers and looking for like two or three specific things in the trailer to mm -hmm. indicate politics a politics driven movie and they're disassociating yeah three strikes you're out Kind of yeah, thing. I, I don't need to see this movie. And the promotional material and the trailer and the marketing, if you see three things that are red flags, you just, you, you tap don't out, right? Because they'll say, and they'll be like, well, if, if you didn't like those things, this movie is not for you. Oh yeah, and they the also movie, started calling the audience <laughs> racist. And yeah, the, the movie like comes out yeah. and it bombs and they're like, um, where were you? Why weren't you watching this movie? So, well, you <laughs> said it wasn't for me. For me. <laughs> <laughs> and there's uh, also interesting wondering why Disney keeps delaying Star Wars and wonders why there's not all this excitement online about at, at another Star Wars movie. It's because hmm. during COVID, you release some Star Wars shows that Dave Filoni and, and them put out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You fired Gina Carano, which mm. <laughs> was one of the worst decisions you could have made. And then you start preaching over and over and over again, this woke ideology. And now that we're back in theaters, you wonder why people aren't showing up to your movies because you mm -hmm. spent like the last three years, the last two years calling them sexist, racist. And unfortunately, and unfortunately, that's the, that ends up being the movie theaters are taking the losses. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the company, the companies are taking the losses. The movie theaters, though, are taking big losses. That's yeah, why mm -hmm. um, anytime you're at the movies, they're like, oh, we're playing all of these other older movies that everybody loved and yeah. enjoyed. Please, please come to the movie theater. I just saw something today. It, bringing Gone with the Wind back to the theaters. <laughs> How old is that movie? How old is that it's movie? You're talking about a racist movie. I mean... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think the biggest thing is the theater companies are going to take a hit. Hollywood has screwed up the content. People don't want to go. Is there a third element at all? Are people just tired of theaters or are we just, no, or no, those, no. It? those are the reasons? I don't think people are tired of theaters. I, I, on a regular basis, I think people are like, yeah, I'd I'm going to go to the theater. Josh just said that uh, yeah. MJ's at the movies right now. Yeah. With nobody else. <laughs> With nobody else. I yeah. think it's funny that Hollywood will continue and continue and continue to blame COVID for this problem. Like they are oh, theater yeah. fatigue or there's people yeah. are scared of viruses now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so they're not going to theaters when they will never, ever, ever, ever admit that it's the content and the quality of stuff they put out that's driven people away from going to the theaters, right? Yeah. yeah. They will never admit that. Is this the beginning of the end of Hollywood? Uh, I, if they keep going down uh, this road, yes. Or the beginning of the end of the movie theaters. <laughs> I if think they keep going down this road. I think. I think it's gonna have to pivot. It always has to pivot. Something has to give. Netflix was the beginning of the end of um, yeah, renting true. movies. Yeah, just renting true. them. Yeah, there's still red boxes out yeah. there. Who's Out watching there. a red box these days? You know, I, but why, you know, I'm not going to rent a red box when I can rent any movie I want between YouTube or yeah, Amazon, Amazon Prime, Prime. Yeah. any movie. 
So there's a thought. They're going to have to pivot or yeah, this is going to be the end because the business won't be able to sustain itself. And like we've said in our podcast, they may start popping up Amazon Prime theaters, mm-hmm. you know, Netflix theaters. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, uh, it's a whole nother conversation. But mm-hmm. if you guys uh, enjoy this kind of videos, these movie news, if you had a good time, and you like us and you want to support us consider joining us here on youtube with memberships or the patreon the links in the description it's only 4.99 or four dollars a month you get cool perks and your names in the credits and early podcasts and such so consider supporting us we really appreciate it subscribing to the channel and liking this video see you next time